Many people ask the question, why is the cow sacred in Hinduism? The cow is called Gomata, Mother Cow. She's worshipped by Hindus, literally. Worshipped, they say that the different gods are in the different parts of the cow. That in the head is one form of God, and in the tail another form of God. And the cow is literally worshipped in temples by Hindus. And Hindu people tend never to eat beef because the cow is considered so sacred that we should not kill the cow. And so there are many descriptions of why the cow is so sacred. And one which is pop popularly given is that the cow is sacred because it's a economic sort of thing that the uh, cow should not be killed because the cow is much more useful alive as a work animal for the milk that it produces. <clears throat> so that's one thought that people have. This was something I wanted to understand. I understood many things I was taught by my guru, but I didn't understand this. My guru always taught that, uh, of course, God is in all things in the universe. God is in this chair, God is in the soul of each person, <clears throat> but that God is more noticeable in certain things. In the awakened saint, in a guru, we see God manifest. In a sacred plant like Tulsi, we see the qualities of God manifest in these things, and so they're revered as particularly sacred. My guru always taught because of the gentle nature of the cow that the cow was considered sacred by Hindu people. And still, you know, I read this, I had some trouble to understand, but I've had some experiences throughout my years that have helped me to uh, understand why the cow is so sacred, and so I want to speak a little bit from my own experience of this. <clears throat> the gentle nature of the cow can be understood by a story uh, we use the cow dung in Ayurvedic medicine. There are five sacred things from the cow which are used called the pancha gavya. And this is the cow dung, the cow urine, the cow ghee, the cow yogurt, and the milk. And these are all taken together in a specific proportion and blessed with particular mantras. They're offered in puja, offered in a special homam, there's a special ceremony, and then it's taken, and it can heal all diseases. And there are Ayurvedic medicines made with this. There's one, Panchagavya Gritam, which is very useful to treat certain conditions in Ayurveda. And in the fire ceremonies, we always use cow dung. And if you don't have wood, cow dung is considered a very special fuel that can be used for the, the fire ceremonies. The sacred nature of certain substances makes them suitable to use to empower our prayers and mantras and our intentions in the sacred fire. And so in India these things are easy to come by, but in the U.S. it's difficult to find, so I was looking for the cow dung. And one guy told me that there was a trail in western Virginia and this trail opened up to some cow pastures and so sometimes the cows would walk around with the people on the trail. He said for sure we could get the cow dung there and so he went with me. He agreed to go and we took big garbage bags to collect the cow dung. And as we went we took some food offerings. I thought if we're taking from the cows we should offer something back. And so I told him this, he was taking cow dung, he was getting lots of it. I think he wanted to take the cow dung quickly and go. And I told him, we should slow down and be appreciative and we should thank these cows. We should offer them some, we have some grains and things. We should offer them the fruits and grains and things. And so we started offering to the cows. And then he saw one baby cow. And he said, oh, I'd love to feed this baby cow. And so he went and he's taking, so he had a handful of grains and he took to the baby cow and he's holding out. And the baby cow was getting somewhat afraid. And then across the way we saw the mother cow. And the mother cow saw what was going on and the baby cow was feeling afraid and she, she was concerned the baby cow was threatened. 
And so now the mother cow is looking at us and all the other cows, they cleared, cleared the path. They got out of the way. Because they saw this mother cow. And now the mother cow was looking much like a bull in a cartoon or something. She was stomping her foot down and like smoke coming out of the nose and she was going to charge, we could tell. <laughs> and I said, you better get away from that baby. I'm getting out of here. I don't want to get killed by the mother cow. And he said, oh, it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Well, and so the mother cow started charging him and the baby cow moved away. And I'm just sitting there praying, oh God, please don't let the cow kill him. And so uh, the, the mother cow got there. And just as, as she was getting about 10 feet away from him, he said, oh, baby cow's gone. Mother cow's here. Let me try to feed her. So she's charging, charging. She's going to kill him. Maybe she's thinking to put her horns through his chest. But when he offers the food, immediately she changes her nature. She says, ooh, for me? And she took the grains and she started eating it very happily and she was thankful for this offering and so that's the nature of the cow of course like a good mother she wanted to protect her baby but she meant no harm to him and when she saw he was just trying to make an offering she happily accepted it and that is a good example for us people because we have to have this compassion and love for all beings around us to progress spiritually this is a great example in the time of temple consecrations they do a ceremony to open the eyes of the deities called Netron Milanum. It's the eye opening for the deities, right? Around the time of Prana Pratishta, the consecration, which gives the life of God into the, the statue. They do the eye opening. And the reason for this is to open a channel in that space of the temple through the murti there so that people can see and feel the spiritual blessings of the devas and that the devas can see into the physical realm and they can hear the prayers of the people and answer those and bless the people in the temple. So at the time of Netron Milanam, after they open the eyes of the deities, there are usually ten or more auspicious things that they bring in for the deities to see and there's mystical significance to all this. One thing they bring is gold and gold has some mystical properties to open a channel so devas can see into the physical realm. They bring some Vedas. And Vedas have a mystical nature, these Vedic hymns to open a channel. And they bring a sannyasi, because the sannyasi has a heightened awareness from all of his, san his sadhanas, spiritual practice. And they bring young boys, brahmacharis, and young girls, kanyas. And they bring cow. They bring a mother cow and baby cow after they do the cow puja. And so every time they do a temple consecration, they have the cow puja. And I've I had the opportunity to, opportunity to participate in quite a few of these cow pujas. And uh, I've gotten some experiences there. It helped me to understand just why the cow is considered so sacred, that it's made a part of these sacred rituals. And so one day I was at one temple consecration and I guess they had completed the, the cow puja and now they're trying to bring the cow into the temple. <clears throat> and so they had a ramp, as is the U.S. law, they had a ramp so that disabled people can come into the temple. And they're trying to bring the cow up the ramp of the temple rather than up the stairs. And there's a bunch of people in front of the cow pulling and a bunch of people behind the cow pushing and a lot of people all around screaming. And this cow was in the middle of the ramp, just stopped, afraid. Didn't want to go. And as afraid as this cow was, I was very impressed that the cow was having no thoughts at any time of hurting the people, just not going to go, just staying there. And so I went up to the cow. I could tell she was afraid. And so I went and I whispered in the cow's ear. I said, it's okay, baby. It's okay. They just want to take you in for their puja. Please go in. They won't hurt you. It's okay, baby. And the cow started walking. So just then one guy came to me. He said, they say that if the cow does what you say, that you are Krishna, you are Krishna. So you are in charge of taking the cow into the temple. And so I had the rope of the cow put in my hand there. And that's how I got appointed to be the guy to take the cow into the temple. And so I 
I could tell the cow was afraid and to keep the cow moving I said we need to get all these loud people away be quiet and let's just get a few people to come with the cow and we'll just go because the cow is afraid and moving better if we if we keep it quiet and keep not too many people around and we'll encourage her and so she went in the temple at that time so it was very nice uh, at that time I, I recall as we went into the temple the priests were in there chanting and uh, as they were chanting someone said to the priest the cow is very afraid so we've got to be quiet so we don't startle the cow and then she'll come in and we'll have a good puja but the noise the chanting it's frightening the cow so we've got to be afraid and so these priests are wonderful scholars they know the mantra so well they study for so many years we should do our pranams to the priests because they have great knowledge of Vedas and the, the Vedas really open up this channel and give the blessings of God to the physical world. Uh, but in a situation like this, the, the priests are chanting and uh, eh, you know, sometimes they have some ego perhaps. They're chanting in a very, very uh, nice way and it sounds very beautiful. You know, but that focus is not so inward all the time. It's not so mindful, you know, and so as we approach the temple with the cow. The priests are chanting. <clears throat> like so. Yeah. But then as the cow goes in, they change their chant. Chandrama manaso jataha chakusho suryo ajayata Mukhadindras chagnischa pranadvayura jayata. They're being quiet, they're being mindful, and they're paying attention to the cow. And so the energy totally shifted in this temple upon the entering of the cow. Because we had to watch out for her. The energy totally shifted. It takes some patience, it takes some compassion it takes some mindfulness to get the cow into the temple and I thought the same of the little boys and little girls going in the temple if you've ever tried to take 20 little girls and keep them in a straight line walking to where they're supposed to be it takes some mindfulness it's a cute thing to watch them going you know it makes us joyous it makes us mindful it makes us patient it makes us pay attention and so I thought it was a beautiful thing Beautiful, beautiful, and I saw why the cow was involved in this ceremony there at that time. I had the opportunity one time, other, to go visit one Goshala. There's a very nice Goshala up in uh, Pennsylvania, a cow sanctuary. One retired Indian guy, he takes care of, of some cows now that he's retired. It be, it's become his seva, the Go seva. He's serving the cow. They say by serving the cow, you serve God. It's a wonderful place. We should all donate to Lakshmi Cow Sanctuary in Pennsylvania to help with the good work going on there. But I had the opportunity to go stay there. And I had read in Shastras that certain places your mantras and your sadhana will be empowered greatly. And I wanted to experience this. They say in the sacred temple, in the presence of your guru, next to the tulsi plants, and in the, the field of the cows. And so when it came time for sleep, they gave me a bedroom. And I, I couldn't sleep. I was just thinking about this cows and if it would uh, empower my mantras. So I went out into the, the field. In the night, I just snuck out from the house and went into the field. And I sat there all night chanting. Because indeed, I felt that the mantra was very much empowered in that sacred place of the cow field. And so the cows really do have a sacred nature that helps us. Milk is a very sattvic food. It's one of the best foods if we're practicing yoga, if we get it from cows who are treated properly. Milk uh, causes the mind to get calm and it nourishes our body and our mind to help in our spiritual practice. And so many blessings come to us from the cow. So these are just some of my experiences that helped me to see why the cow has been considered particularly sacred by the rishis, by the sages, 